So do you think it is easy to idolize education over God? Amen. So last time we did the story of David and Goliath. Remember guys, today we are going to talk about Peter and Jesus. Amen. So this one represents fish. This is the best thing I can find. And this one represents boat. So let us open our Bibles. Amen. And I'm going to be reading the story of Jesus and the miraculous catch of fish. Amen. We will now try to relate this story to how it is easy to idolize education over God. And I know it will help you a lot, actually. Amen. Luke chapter 5, and it's from verse 1. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathan from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two other disciples were together. I am going out to fish. Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Verse 4, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Seven, and the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there, with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the, the net shore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus, Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them. And did, this, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to stop here. May God bless the reading of his words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So is it easy to idolize education over God? Amen. You see, three things are picked up from that story. You see, Peter, Peter, the Bible recorded that Peter is a qualified fisherman. If you like, you can call him an expert in fishing. And what does the scripture say about Jesus? Jesus is not a fisherman, okay? So it's like telling a hair, nose, and throat doctor how to treat hair, nose, and throat. Maybe a carpenter coming to teach a specialized person how to deal with air, nose, and throat. Jesus is a carpenter, or was a carpenter. Simon Peter is a qualified fisherman, an expert in fishing. But the Bible recorded from that teaching that the day they went to fish, they tore out. In fact, it's been recorded that in the night when you go fishing, you are likely to catch more fish compared to the daytime, okay? But on that night, they didn't catch anything. Not 
not until Jesus came to them and said, Friends, did you catch anything? They said, No, my Lord. They didn't know that was Jesus actually. And Jesus said, Launch your net to the right hand side. Like that. Their net went from being empty to being full. Look at that. All this fish. And they actually struggled to carry it. Amen. They struggled to carry it. I want to try and relate this story to the fact that by yourself, you can't do anything, children, youth, teenagers. By yourself, you cannot do anything. You may be the smartest of all in your class. It may look as though that you are very smart, intelligent, everybody is looking up to you. But I'm telling you, by yourself, you cannot do anything. How can an expert fisherman, the Bible recorded, would go fishing and then he won't catch anything? It goes to show that by yourself, you can't do anything. By Peter's ability and professionalism, he couldn't do anything. But Jesus came, the Lord, the Messiah, he said, launch your net to the right hand side and they caught so much fish. Another thing I took from that story, we'll go back and read it again. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 10 of that scripture that we read, Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net short. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was untorn. I will pause there for a second. You see, the Bible is saying that there was so much fish in that net, yet that net didn't get ripped. That net didn't tear. Children, as you continue to get older, as you continue to go on in your academics, in your studies, you will find some things challenging. You will find some things difficult to tackle or handle. You will find some life situations that may look as though it's going to pull you down, weigh you down, discourage you, or make you feel oppressed or depressed. But Jesus is here to carry you. Amen. You see, Inside that, that net, no matter how hard that challenge or situation or difficulty is, God is telling you, I will help you carry that net and it's not going to rip, it's not going to tear, it's not going to shred into pieces. I will strengthen you, I will be with you. And it's one of the things we read in the scriptures this morning. God is always there to carry you. Some of you might be experiencing it now. You say, I don't like maths. I don't like English. I don't like geography. No, Jesus is telling you, I'm here to carry you. No matter how heavy your workload in school might get, you won't feel overwhelmed. Why? If you will put Jesus in that boat, if you will not leave Jesus out in that boat, you may be the smartest, but if Jesus is out of the boat, you will find it really challenging. Even though you are smart, even though you are intelligent, even though you are brilliant, Jesus must not come out of that boat. Amen. Amen. If not, the weight of the fish will be too much for you to handle. It will be too much for you to carry. Will someone do that? Will you leave Jesus in the boat? So the fish in the net will not tear apart. The struggles you go through every day. I have to do this own work. If you are not careful, if Jesus is outside of that boat, the fish will be too heavy for you to carry. Amen. Amen. Am I making sense? The top thing I learned from that passage, is it easy to idealize education over God? We'll read it from that verse 10 again. Amen. Jesus said to them, 12, Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. 
None of the disciples dared to ask, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. Amen. Praise God, I'll stop there. You see, as children of God, okay, God does not only want to be in your boat, this boat here. God wants to be in that boat, okay? God wants to help you carry that fish so the bag is not ripped or shredded. So the challenges and difficulties of life does not overwhelm you. Guess what? God also wants to dine with you. God wants to dine with you. Amen. Amen. Say God wants to dine with me. God wants to dine with you. God actually wants to eat with you. Amen. Look at it. He said, come. Come and have breakfast. Come. Come and have breakfast. God is calling you today. Come. Come and have breakfast. Come. Come and have lunch. Come. Come and have dinner. God wants to dine with you, children. He does. He wants to dine with you. If you give him the chance, you will find a balance between life's challenges, which include education and training, okay, and God. Because God is real. God wants to carry you. God wants to be in your heart. Your heart now is the boat. Amen. God wants to help you. God wants to help me. Mommies and daddies, God wants to help us. He wants to carry us. He wants to uplift us. No matter what the situation is, God wants to carry you. See, what Debbie read this morning, the, the mainstream media is telling you that you can't be so much. You are not enough, except if you look certain way or you, look, you do certain things, or for you to belong. God is saying to you, I want to be in your heart, okay? I want to be in your heart. I want to carry you, and I want to dine with you. I want to eat with you. Amen. Praise God. And if we are able to recognize this, that we, without God, we can't do anything, it means we are acknowledging that Jesus is Lord, and he's going to carry us through all those challenges. You will find that things you, you, are, you are looking at very difficult, they become easier for you. Amen. They become easier for you. Amen. Children, say amen. amen. Say amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Another thing I took away from that scripture, you see, that Bible reading says that the disciples didn't actually know that was Jesus. But when Jesus said, launch your net to the right, launch your net to the right, what did they do? They launched to the right. And what happened? They caught so many fish. Amen. Obedience, obedience, and faith. They were willing to do the right thing. They were willing to obey that direction. They lurched to the right and they caught so many fish. Obedience, children, it starts with very little things. If mommy is telling you, don't do this, don't do it. If daddy is telling you, don't do this, don't do it. Your teachers in school, if they are telling you, don't do this, don't do it. Obedience, it starts small, and faith in the Lord. Obedience to the father and mother, obedience to God, and faith in God. Amen. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Even when the mainstream media is saying you can't do it, even when all your friends are saying, oh God, that math is so hard, it's so tough, it's so difficult. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Faith in God and obedience in God. What did Peter do? An expert fisherman. He launched right, he caught so many fish. Amen. Amen. You can launch right if God tells you to. In your mind, you will hear the voice of God. That's still small voice is the voice of God. Listen to him. Let Jesus continue to be in the boat of your life, which is in your heart. And the more you do in life, 
the easier it will become, even though it may look hard. Amen. 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 Praise God. So here are a few things that you can do. Amen. Here are a few things that you can do to enjoy that privilege that Peter enjoyed. Amen. Amen. To enjoy that privilege of catching so many fish, but the, 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 the nets didn't get ripped. Amen. Here are a few things that we can do, all of us. Separation. Let's read again. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. Why he dismissed the crowd? 23. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountain side by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. Amen. Praise God. Amen. How can you find a balance between your education and God? Separation. Jesus led us by example. What did he do? He went by himself. And he went alone. To do what? To pray. Amen. Children, separation is very important at this stage of your life to learn to separate yourselves from things that are not of benefit to you or importance to you. So you can do what? So you can study. And one thing I always like to say to everyone I speak to is even before you start to study, pray first. Amen. Do what? Pray. pray first. You see, it's God that gives wisdom. It's God that gives knowledge. It's God that gives understanding. And it is God that gives that retentive memory. Some of us read. After a while, we forget those things. But with God in your boat, with God in your heart, by starting every move with God, those things will stick. The one thing I know is that there's no dumb person. This I know from my own experience. I shared with you one boy that used to bully me when I was in secondary school. Today I will share with you another one. His name is Musa Okola. This boy, I was born and raised in Lagos, but Musa was born in Ibadan, or your state. When they brought him from Oyo State to Lagos, he had Oyo accent. So he doesn't speak regular Lagos, Yoruba, or English. He had a very strong accent. And myself, I was always the smartest kid in class. First, every time. When this boy came from Oyo State, this boy showed me pepper. And that is what I mean by there's nobody that is dumb. If you think you are not smart, some people, some of you say, I'm not smart. Or maybe Elaine is smarter than me. No, Elaine is not smarter. This boy that came not knowing anything started showing me. So he, drove, he, he chased me away from first. He chased me to second. After a while in Lagos, this boy, after school, he would sit down, go to the lesson, he will sit in school and read his books. So by the time this boy spent a couple of months, he was the smartest. In fact, in the whole of the school, he started carrying first. So he goes to tell you that there's nobody that is dumb. Praise God. So you all are not dumb. Even if it looks like, oh, I'm not the smartest, you are the smartest. You are the smartest and you can enjoy all the privileges that Peter enjoyed. Amen. Amen. The bag was full. And also, they retain all that fish in the bag. So when you study, you can actually assimilate and it will stick to your brain. Amen. It will stick to your brain. Amen. Finding God, balancing God and education, separation. You will learn to separate yourself, to study, Things that don't concern you, turn up the telly, read your books. Before you do so, pray. And it is God that can help you. Amen. Jesus showed us by example. He did what? He went alone to pray. Children learn to stay alone to study. Amen. Because there's quietness, 
There's nothing disturbing you. Turn off that telly. Turn off that Wi-Fi. You can do it. Amen. Another thing to do is the ability to say no. There's power in saying what? No. There's power in doing what? Say no. No. You have to learn to say no. One, you can separate yourself. Don't be a loner. But learn to spend time alone. To do what? To study. To pray. To read the word of God. Amen. Amen. The ability to say no. There's power in that. Amen. Your friends will come up to you. They will say, oh yeah. Let's go and hang out. When there's an exam coming up. You know Christmas is coming up. You all have midterm tests. Am I right or wrong? You do. You have exams and you have tests. What should you do? What should you do? What should you do? This is your time to say what? No. no. The ability to say what? No. Things that will waste your time, number one, is not adding any value to you. For example, social media. Yeah, Rihanna launched a new lipstick. How does that add any value to you? <laughs> Amen. Beyonce is going on top to South Africa. How does it add any value to you? Learn to say no. Amen. Amen. Things that won't add any value to you. Things that don't concern you. Maybe something is happening somewhere in Dublin. Or so, some people are fighting. Cyber fight. Don't join them. Amen. Spend all that time to do what? Spend time alone. And do what? Study. And before you study, pray. Amen. Number three. Plan your time. Plan your time. You see, every day, God has given us the chance, the opportunity to enjoy 24 hours every day. God has given us that opportunity to enjoy 24 hours every day. Amen. Praise God. From the moment you wake up in the morning, take charge of your day. Amen. Take charge of your day. Because if you don't take charge of your day, Anything goes, even for the birds. That's when someone will just call you, Tara. I need help with this, I need help with that, I need help with that. While they are going about doing their own work that will add value to them, you are helping them to run all the errands around. Amen. Take charge of your day from the moment you wake up. And this is why it's important to have a small jotter or journal. Anything you want to call it. You sit there in the morning. Today, by the grace of God, once you have that quiet time, you write things you want to achieve today. Even on a day when you are not going to school. Today, I want to spend 20 minutes reading geography. Then, next step, I want to spend 40 minutes in Dennis' house. Or... I want to go and see the turning out of the Christmas light on Grafton Street. Something like that. You can see there's a balance. It's not only books. I included a book. I included visiting a friend. And I included another social activity. You can actually find all the balance. You can do, spend time with God. You can read the scripture. You can have fun playing. I was telling the boys when they were doing their living set. I would tell them, Study, and if you have to go out at the weekend, go out. Because it's not possible for you to sit down there and read for 24 hours. It's not possible. You have to find a balance. You spend time with God. You spend time reading your book. You spend time playing with your friends or going out. And don't try to sneak out or anything. Say to your dad, Dad, my plan today is I'm studying for two and a half hours. After which, I'm going to Timmy's house. I'm going to Marvelous's house. Say to them, let them know what you're doing. And once they see that you are doing the right thing, which is sit and read your book, they will be the one to say, so how much do you need to go out today? Am I right, parents? Parents want to do that. They want to support you. I want to do that as a parent. Amen. So plan your time. Pray and plan. Spend time with God. Read the word of God and then plan your day. Do it every day. 
Monday to Friday, maybe Saturday you want to laze around, you want to sleep for long in the morning, and Sunday you want to come to church. In fact, plan your week, plan your month, so you know the activities you are doing. If you are playing football, or Thursday is football, or Wednesday is Bible study, you can actually plan everything, weekly or days. And as we do so, God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How to find a balance between God and your education. Amen. If there's anything you want to do, do it now. Do it now. Don't procrastinate. Amen. What do they say? Procrastination is the what? Thief of time. If there's anything you want to do, do it now. Do it now. What did Jesus do? After he finished with all the disciples, what did he do? He went straight up to pray. Amen. Did he say, okay, I will leave it till tomorrow? The Bible didn't record that. He just left and he went. Children, if you want to study today at 12 o'clock, let it not be the time you'll be thinking of Chelsea and Man U. Those things will always be there. They will always be there. There will always be football matches to be, to be watched. There will always be parties, birthday parties. 